Hello. Vibra's here again, and on part three, we're going to go over Flame Core, the Tropical Jungle Rouge, and Mephilus 1. I will link this tutorial to the Iblis 2 despawn in the description. It's a really important trick to learn, um, but I will be skipping it for the purposes of this tutorial because there's already a tutorial that exists that is pretty good. Um, I will again be referencing stuff from part one and part two of this tutorial. So if you haven't watched those, go check those out. Also on my channel. So a preface to flame core. Flame core is the first level where you use chaos snap, or the, rather the chaos boost that you see pictured in the loading screen. Um, it is also a really hard level. Don't expect to hit everything. There are also beginner alternatives that I can recommend. Um, that I will attempt to outline, but not but not all of the platforming will be necessarily visible. So don't feel too intimidated if you can't pull everything off that's shown here. Now at the start of Flame Core, there's going to be a little bit of an automation section. And after that, you want to jump and homing attack directly off to your right. This is going to skip these loops that are right here. And then what you want to do is jump to this platform. You're going to want to delay your homing attack significantly and do a nice and full jump. Um, now, here is an advanced strat. This is, this is kind of where the path takes two turns. You can either take the spring and go to the right. Um... And that's much easier. Or you can hit this bird. You can also hit the, the next one. But I choose to go around it by facing right and then curving back around to the left. And hit this dash panel from behind. You don't want to land over here. As there are worms that will spawn over approximately here that will trigger if you stand farther right. So if you want to make it in time for the worms, you want to cut it very close to, to the near edge as I did. You can see that the worm spawned just as I was passing. After going to the right in the beginner route, you'll see this little uh, passageway to your left. You can jump from the upper passageway, which the spring will take you to, over here. So this is kind of where the routes converge. Um, after that, you want to do something called clench jump. I will, I will note that I use the right bumper to rotate the camera which you can do instead of right sticking everything like I usually do. Um, it's a jump, it's kind of a blind jump around this corner. But once you see the platform, Shadow's naturally long homing attack should let you across. Um, this requires a little bit of practice. Um, it saves about 10 seconds. And, but it is worth knowing the backup. The backup is you hightail it over to this platform here, which will trigger a chain of birds in order to make it back to where Shadow is right now. So what I'm doing is backtracking a little bit to trigger some enemies that you are required to beat to open a cage with the spring in it. So once I see this ground, like, Shadow pass about here where the ground stops curving and just flattens out into a wall 
I I jump out, I face towards the camera, and then I reach out it with left trigger in order to snap it back into position so I can homing attack back and spawn those two lizards. Now you can use the line of sight trick to kill one and then kill the other. That will spawn a worm. I like throwing three chaos spheres here just to make sure I'm at the right height to be low enough to kill the lizard. I mean the to attack the spring after killing the worm. I got what's called an instant spear here. This is kind of unfortunate as shadow will not lock on up to a place higher up on the worm than usual. Because the worms kind of bend down to face you, usually, but when they're speared, they're straight up. This is actually useful later in the level. So, as soon as that spring opens up, I'm going to attack it. Now you want to face straight left and curve forward. And then walk into this Chaos Boost capsule. Don't trigger it immediately. Um, you want to pause up here, and then mess it up a little bit. And then, as soon as you see yourself clip in, you press the right trigger or R two to activate Chaos Boots, which will stop all your momentum. And you want to stop all your momentum, otherwise you go careening off a ledge and lose about. 40 plus seconds. Um, the, the, the first checkpoint you can take is right after this purple lizard. So I'm going to jump past these birds. This crystal right here is solid. So you want to make sure you go under it. If you're not comfortable, do feel free to take the birds. But just remember, just don't slam into the crystal and everything should be fine. Now I... Now that's the first instance of a chaos snap. See what I do? You'll see Shadow have a little bit of an after image here. It's hard to tell right now. But I'll have a, what's called snap storage here. But this is done by, instead of tapping A to do a homing attack, holding A to do a homing attack. Shadow will shimmer, and if there is a target within his line of sight, he'll teleport to it. Otherwise, he'll just, like, stop all momentum, shimmer, and then fall straight down. That means the next homing attack, if, if he doesn't find a target, the next homing attack you do, regardless whether you tap or hold, will teleport to its target. So, what I do is I jump immediate homing attack. To snap and teleport to the other side of the door where the checkpoint is. If you're feeling a little ballsier, you can hold this jump out for a little longer to go over the checkpoint and straight to the spring. But death is a very real possibility in Flame Core, so just take that into account. Now that you've used that teleport, your snap is no longer stored. So homing attacks work as normal, unless you hold the A button. So you want to hold A to store a snap off this ring box. Or above that ring box. You want to avoid that Titan. And then you, you want to do a long jump over here. And then tap A to homing attack the spring inside the cage. This is another trick that you can do with snap is that if there is a spring inside a cage and you can lock onto the spring, the cage will just automatically open and you'll use the spring as if it weren't there. So I use the homing attack to get onto the platform. I face the spring and then snap immediately phases me through the box and hits the spring and opens the cage. Now this section I am not particularly good at. If you want a good flame core river, I suggest uh, 
looking at say Nick's IL on speedrun.com. Um, although he does play it a bit risky because you have like four seconds of invincibility, you can really abuse that in this next section instead of having to wait for all these platforms and jump from platform to platform. But generally, I follow this route. You jump onto this platform, and instead of jumping all the way across, you jump to the next platform, then you jump to the one on your left, spin kick since it's uphill, I'm going to attack to the right of this goopy bit because that tends to mess you up and then take damage. Now you are on kind of a four second clock. If you trip on anything, which you can on this lava, um, you have to find a way to bail. But remember, do not hold the A button if you are still red shadow. Um, or else you will get a snap, and if you have no targets, you will die. So that that was a skid. You do not want to skid. But the general idea is you homing attack twice, since you're still going uphill. I don't know how that causes skid. And you homing attack again, generally to that platform. You have a lot more time to do so. And you homing attack to this platform generally and pick up a, a ring or two. So then you homing attack this bird. And if you notice, way up here, there's a one up capsule. We're going to try and lock onto that one up capsule. Um. That is ideal. You want to just be able to walk out of being at the one-up capsule. If you don't, homing attack it again, but hold A to store a snap. You need a snap stored by this next door in order to skip it. Like that. I, I, cho I choose to store the snaps on the way. I do accidentally use the snap, so I have to store another one. And then, if, if you would have sound on, if you get close enough to this door, there are enemies that spawn on the other side of it. So what you do is you face generally towards those enemies. And then homing attack all the way to this purple guy. Now you want to jump into this bird after optionally taking the checkpoint. You can also jump off the door into the bird, which is a little faster. But jumping into damage sources will interrupt the animation you get that would that would normally knock you on your butt and then you have to get up and that wastes about two seconds. And notice that I have a snap stored here, so I can teleport to the swing box, although a normal homing attack will do just fine. Homing attack, face left, curve around right, to go around the Titan. Then there are several ways to do this last jump. You can either, let's say this is the closest bird is one, middle bird is two, farthest bird is three. You can go either straight from one to three, or you can jump around to the left of all three, and once you pass bird number two, you can homing attack and curve a little to the right. I personally prefer this method. Sometimes you get to bird number two, but that's not quite an issue. Three homing attacks later, and you're out. Note that the meteors here can kill you even if you're locked into this jump panel so be careful it's just unfortunate if it happens but it's a thing that can happen so don't be surprised now 
Now here in section two, I'm going to show off the, the, the chaos control trick. Um, it saves about 15 seconds, but it requires a life. So if you have zero lives, you cannot do this trick. Um, Did I pause? You did. So you want a homing attack onto the second bird. Third bird if you can help it. Um, I mean, there, you can do second and then third, and then go up to the string, but... Oh, it, in addition, if you hold A after a homing attack, you will gain height. This is pretty important. Not only here, but some, somewhere later down the line in the section two of flame core. And then you you will lock onto the spring, but you won't actually target it because there's a cage there. Regardless of what route you're taking, whether you're doing chaos control or not, you will take this um, chaos boost capsule, pop it immediately. Tap to homing attack there, and then you want to jump, hold to get a snap stored, and fall right into this bird so you don't take damage from the lava while grounded. You want to do three homing attacks in that general direction. And then if you see this line right here, you want to run straight at it, jump, just just a tap jump, not not anything huge, and then a homing attack. Right after you homing attack, you want to hold hard right. What this snap does is since it can't choose which point on the spline to teleport to you, it teleports you straight to the coordinate origin of the map which is very far away. And then it'll continue your homing attack as if nothing ever happened. And so what you end up doing is homing attacking into a kill plane, which gives you a lot of momentum. Enough so you can hit the checkpoint. There are a couple things that can go wrong with chaos control. Um, if you find that the checkpoint does not spawn in, that means you're not going far enough right enough as you're approaching the rail. Um, this trick takes a lot of practice, oh, well, a good bit of practice, but it's very worth it. Um, look at any no major glitches run for the route that does not include chaos control since it is banned there. So after you hit that checkpoint, you'll respawn here. We're going to want to spear this guy. And then homing attack him. Hold A for the height. And try and lock onto the rail. You may relock onto the worm. But that's okay. Um, just try and, try and get above the worm. So you can target this rail. And again, three taps a second and just fall off and walk at Rouge. Now, Rouge, you're not going to do the session as intended. This saves way too much time to warrant any alternatives. Um, so you want to climb up this wall directly to your left. There are a couple landmarks because it is pretty dark. So this mini ceiling here, this brighter spot that's covering this side of the screen over here, you want to go directly to the left of it. It's like a mini ceiling. And then you see how the ruse like snapped. Like, boom. This is a corner, actually. You're climbing at a corner. You want to follow this corner as tightly as possible while going straight up. And, until you hit the ceiling. This is where the corner is. And this is generally where you want to be when you jump out. Ooh. 
So what you do is you line yourself up with the thicker part. Oh goodness, the impression is on me. Of this black triangle. Is it like a thin strip when it starts at the corner and it gets really thick around here? And it's just to the right of the corner. Um, so you hold up and you just jump out. Now, you want to take a fairly similar path to mine. You can hold jump for, for the height, but you don't need to. But you should do more than a tap. You want to get out, like, for sure, for sure. And then you want to start gliding. Now, the reason I'm curving to the left is there is actually a kill plane to my right, somewhere over here, generally. And then I curve back in. The thing is, you don't want to curve out too far to the left, or else you will get stuck back inside what you just traversed a shadow, and you will have to take a death in order to progress. Because Rouge cannot climb on anything that isn't explicitly marked as climbable, and nothing in shadow section is climbable. Not only that, there is an invisible wall separating you from getting back to where you can originally climb up. So try not to do that if you can help it. And then you're going to see this tunnel. Uh, you want to go at the tunnel. I, I circle around to get less height. I'm still holding glide. And when you clip in, you want to take damage while gliding and neutral sticking. See how fast I fell there? It's a bit sped up. So you normally want to take damage from one of those three geysers, but the longer you glide, the faster you fall when you take damage, as long as you neutral stick. And boom, you're at the goal. I would recommend practicing Rouge Skip. It's very similar to Knuckles, but Rouge ha loses less height while gliding, so that damage boost is an option. Just remember that if you have no rings by the time you hit there, you cannot damage boost. So you just have to fall like down the tube and, and avoid the fire. Sub 3 is a great time starting out um, for Flame Core. It's a very difficult level. Don't be discouraged if you're like getting like 320, 330, or even 4 minutes at first. Just keep going at it. You'll get it eventually. I, I have faith in anyone that's watching this tutorial and has come this far. And as mentioned before, I will skip Iblis 2. Tropical Jungle Rouge is a straightforward level that introduces a couple more mechanics that Rouge has. Particularly corner climbing and moon jumping. Corner climbing is when you... So at the beginning you want to take a ring. This is important for the very end of the level. And glide to your left. What you want to do is glide directly at where those where the corner of the pillar is. I miss it a little to the left. But if you do it correctly, you'll see this kind of like stuttering. That moves you vertically much faster than just climbing. So if you can bullseye this corner, you can, you can go all the way up in a very short amount of time. Now for a trick that can't really kill your run, because it loses no time if you miss it, but it does lose time RTA because if you pause buffer it. So 
So you're going to, what it's called, it's called moon jumping. You may have encountered this accidentally through a casual playthrough, but here's how it works. When you release glide the frame before you hit the ground, um, you, well, I should preface this with while you're gliding, you have this upwards for force that's building, but is weaker than gravity. So it cancels out to so you get like a lessened gravity. You don't get gravity turned down for you. You just get this extra anti-gravity that makes you float while gliding. If you release A, the frame before you hit the ground, the gravity turns off, the anti-gravity doesn't. And so you go flying, proportional to how long you've been gliding in the first place. So I try and double tap and hold as fast as possible. And to get a general idea, I count to six flaps of her wings. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't go for moon jump here, but actually no, I, I pause late. I've already hit the ground, so there's no point. This is the frame that you want to see. You want to see her boot and her shadow have a little bit of space in between it, but not much. This is a bit early. And if you hear, the, and this is a bit late. This is one frame late. And I pause two frames late. So once you see this frame and you pause, you release A, you unpause, and you go very far up. And then you can glide to the end. However, that doesn't always happen. So you keep going. You can corner climb. You can tr I tried to corner climb that. This is one of the easier pillars to corner climb. I don't know if I hit it or not. Oh, that's perfect. That's what corner climbing should look like. And then there's a, a moon jump that's kind of optional there that you can try for to get over these lasers. But otherwise, use the ring that you picked at the beginning to damage yourself on this left side. Don't worry, there's ground here. And then you corner climb up this corner. And boom, you're done with Tropical Jungle Rouge. It's a very straightforward level. Sub 45 is generally one you, what you want to aim for, provided you don't get Moon Jump. Or maybe Sub 40 even, if you're feeling spicy. But it's not that much time. Um, moon jump is a lot of time. But the, the level itself, itself doesn't take that much time to complete. Now, meth one. This boss has two phases. Once with shadow and one with omega, which we haven't played as yet. At the beginning of the fight, you want to take some rings. And I do this wrong, actually. You want to be, ideally, so the goons, when they, these little guys, when they spawn at first, they spawn around you. You want to be, like, over here by this, like, other trail of rings by the time they spawn, so that they spawn over the lava. What damages you can damage them. So you want to do four homing attacks, damage yourself on the lava, and there will be a circle of goons that will dogpile onto you after about two and a half seconds. So you want to bait them into the lava this time. You want to keep homing attacking these guys. Sometimes you can get two or even three. And then... When Mephilus or Shadow says something, that's when you want to fall down, 
and then you'll get another dog pile. But you can just do the cyclone, which is thing kicking, but you just hold neutral and you're completely still to clear these out. Then a third dog pile should be sufficient if you're good to activate Chaos Boost and raise Mephilus from the ground. Now, this is part of where Snap Combat comes in. It's not really relevant until you have like enemies that require a lot of hits. Meph has 12 health in this phase. Assuming one homing attack is one. So, to do a quick three damage. So, when I snap. And then kick once. Um, Shadow will be in this, like, ready animation. Like this. After you kick, this ready animation also does a point of damage. So you sn snap, kick, and then you go to ready, and that's three damage. And then I do it again. It's a weird A rhythm, but I encourage you to look at the input display, read this back, and try and decipher it. And, and then this can just, and then when Meth reaches half health, he'll always go to the center. And then you do six more hits and you're done. Now this is the Omega phase. I'm gonna pick up a ring and start hovering because he's always gonna be at around the height he's at. You want to tap X, because tapping X gives you the Omega shot. And you want to tap it as basically as fast as possible. After two hits, Meth will usually move to one of, like, the, if you can visualize it, the six corners of a hexagon. Um, so to a random location. So you want to... Turn towards where you think he is and press left trigger to recenter the camera. Two. One. Two. The reason I'm trying to fight under a third shot is that sometimes Mephilus can be multi hit. I don't think I get any in this PV. But, yeah, I don't. And in that case, you just stay in the same direction and keep firing as fast as possible. It's very straightforward. Uh, this aisle is pretty random due to the nature of multi-hits. and But you should try and aim for getting... Chaos boost in three circle dog piles of of the first phase. Generally. And then Omega, you should just try and hit as many shots as you can humanly possible. Okay, next part we're going to cover radical train. Silver and aquatic base. Um, the run slows down significantly after radical train. So stick around for part four.